Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's Filipino Feast live stream. My name's Carrie. I'm City Market's Assistant Outreach Education Manager. I'm the one who's been sending you all of the emails, so now you can put a face to a name, and I'm not wearing a mask, so you can put a full face to a name instead of just eyes and a forehead. Um, really excited to have everyone tuned in with us tonight. If you want to share in the Q&A box where you're watching from, that's always fun to see where our audience is tuning in from. I'll go back behind the scenes after this little intro, put an announcement in us that and I will be able to see those throughout the live stream so at any point if you have questions for our instructor comments on the recipe um, anything you want to share you can put it into that box I will see it and I can pass it along to our instructor Maria um, if you're joining us a little bit late you can always hit live it's down at the bottom by the play pause button and that will catch you up to where we are in the class rather than making you start at the very beginning um, and I would just love to know your thoughts in the class and ideas for other classes you'd like to see from us. I'll send a survey link out tomorrow to get your feedback on that. But I think without further ado, I will turn things over to our instructor for the evening. Maria, take it away. Hi, uh, my name is Maria Garrido um, and I am a chef instructor. Um, I attended NECI and um, I have been doing classes for City Market here for a couple years, um, mostly along the Filipino feast um, uh, series, um, and it's been it's been great. Um, and tonight, I'm really excited to pr to uh, present a new recipe that we haven't done here before, um, called chicken sotanghon soup. Um, sotanghon is the Filipino name Tagalog word for bean thread noodles. Um, which are these are the ones um, that we have here, um, which you can find. Um, we know we, you can find them at City Market, um, but you can also find them at um, any Asian grocery store in town. Um, the one, the one that I usually use lo looks like this, um, but there's many brands. There's many different type of um, bean thread noodles. Um, and they all sort of work the same. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, certainly, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, um, please type them into the question um, to the chat box so Carrie, um, Carrie can let me know um, and we can answer them um, as they come up. So um, hopefully you got a copy of the recipe, the written recipe. It's a very simple recipe. Um, using very simple ingredients. I think the most exotic would be the bean thread noodles. Um, and it's it's a very quick recipe. Um, it takes it takes less than an hour to make. So um, we're going to start with the chicken. Um, the first thing we're going to do is cook the chicken. Um, so I'm going to put this pot here. Let me get this. Yeah, we build this class as 5.30 to 7, but it might be closer to 5.30 to 6.30. Five just means plenty of time for questions if you have any, but just kind of showcasing a nice, so, easy recipe. Yeah, so we've got boneless, skinless chicken thighs here just because um, I like to use chicken thighs because they have more flavor than chicken breast. Um, but you can certainly use bone-in chicken. Um, you can use... Uh, chicken breasts as long as you don't overcook it. <laughs> um, you can use um, leftover chicken. Um, we were talking earlier about if you have a rotisserie chicken, you can just pull the meat off of that. Um, you don't necessarily have to have um, raw chicken to, to do this recipe, so it's great for leftover chicken. Obviously, if you're using leftover chicken, you'd skip this step. <laughs> Somebody has a question. Will this soup recipe work as well with other types of noodles? Um, yes, it will. Um, it will work with um, pretty much any type of noodle, um, but the, the bean thread noodles are also called cellophane noodles because they're clear. Um, you, I've also done it with rice noodles. Um, I've also done it with rice noodles and um, uh, um, trying to remember the type of noodles. There's a Chinese wheat noodle. Um, they're, kind of, they're very, yeah, ones. they're very yellow. 
Um, I've done I've done it with egg noodles as well. Huh? So um, I have to wash my hands. Really. <laughs> Probably not like Italian pasta, right? You wouldn't want to do like spaghetti. No, no. Udon would be good in this. I love the, the chewy texture of udon, but it'd be very different than the cellophane noodles. Yes. So yes, it will work with any other, most any other type of noodle. Um, closest in flavor would be the rice noodles. Closest in flavor and texture would be rice noodles. <laughs> and also, um, because it's these are bean thread noodles, um, it's gluten free. So there's no um, there's no gluten in the noodles. Um, so the first thing you need to do with bean thread noodles is soak them. They are a dry noodle. So this is what they look like dried. They usually come in little packets. Um, we're going to use six ounces, so I think it mostly is about one ounce for a little package, a, a little um, pack of it. So you want to soak them in room temperature water. I'm going to soak it for about 10 15 minutes while I cut the vegetables and then drain it. Would you want to do the soaking step if you were using other noodles, or would you want to just cook those according to how they? Um, you need to cook them according to whatever the instructions are. Great. Um, this is basically a chicken noodle soup, so mm -hmm. you want to um, get the the chicken going and then get the aromat aromatics going and then you add the noodles and chicken. So I need enough water to cover these. This seems like a good a good recipe for this time of year where it's sort of starting to warm up so you get a little bit of that nice fragrant ginger and garlic and everything but it's still chicken noodle soup season. Yes <laughs> it is still chicken noodle soup season. So um, we put the lid on here Okay, so while we're waiting for the chicken to um, to cook, um, we're going to cut the vegetables that we're going to use. Um, so we need some sliced onion. Let's see how this onion looks here. This one's pretty sprouted. I'm going to try the other yeah, one. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's the problem with local onions. They're so delicious, but we're near the end of their storage season. Some of them are hiding some brown on the inside. How's that one look? This one's good. Good. So because this is a noodle soup and they're kind of long, thin noodles, you want to cut your vegetables in the same kind of shape, long, thin. Um, so, so they won't end up all chunky in the in the soup. Oops, peeling the onion. So with the onion, I'm just going to cut what they call julienne. So I'm just going to cut in strips. For those of you who attended your. Uh Concept class, kind of the same idea, right? Yeah. Long and thin, like the noodles, have similar textures. We're very excited for hopefully we'll be able to get back to some in person classes later this season. Cook together and eat together tonight. Get another bowl here. So we have the onion cooked, um, cut really into slices. We're also going to do ginger, um, <clears throat> about a tablespoon or so of ginger. Um, I really love ginger in this recipe, so I tend to use a lot of it. <laughs> I, I approve. I love ginger. Um, ginger and chicken soup is just amazing. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Oops. So um, we're going to do ginger and then um, I 
you have a comment. Love the online classes. Yes, I don't think we're going to ever stop doing those. We'll probably just go to a sort of hybrid once it feels safe of in person and virtual, but we'll see. Definitely I'm enjoying the fact that we're reaching so many more people with our with our online classes and that we're building our video library, which is fun. So peeling the ginger um, trick, you can use a peeler, but you can also use um, just a, t a, a spoon because you can scrape the skin off that way if you, if you don't have a peeler. Now the um, the ginger, you just want to mince that. And just another tip with the ginger, ginger has um, long fibrous roots running in it and they run the length of the root. Um, you can tell when you cut it or you break it off, you can see the little fuzzy strings hanging out. You want to cut across those strings um, first because otherwise you end up with stringy pieces of ginger in whatever it is you're cooking. So I'm going to cut this across across those strings first. So far we've had a couple people from Vermont and someone from Minnesota watching. So from where? Minnesota. Minnesota. Probably colder there than it is here right now. Yeah. And just so everybody knows too, um, you are watching on about a 30 to 40 second delay from what we are streaming. Um, so if you've typed in your question and you're like, why haven't they gotten to it yet? Um, just know that you know, you're know you on a delay from us. So we're probably getting to it. We just haven't gotten there yet. So we're just mincing the ginger into little pieces. You can also use a little food processor for this if you have one. Do you have any cooking thoughts on like those tubes of ginger paste that you often find at Asian grocery um, stores? I wouldn't use ginger paste just because I, it might be a funny texture. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might. I assume it would dissolve in the in the soup, so you might. I just get the flavor instead of the texture. Um, I've never done it with ginger paste, but um, you could try it. Yeah. Got Chicago, uh, Chicago. Brevard, North Carolina in the mountains where it's raining apparently, and Virginia. So welcome. We're getting a lot of the East Coast. So I've chopped a little bit over a tablespoon of ginger. Like I said, I like ginger, so I tend to put a little bit more in. Um, in most recipes I've found, um, ginger and garlic, you can be a little bit more flexible with what the recipe calls for based on your taste. Kind of like salt and pepper to taste. I saw a meme that was like, never let a recipe tell you how much garlic to add. Yeah. You add that with your heart. <laughs> Someone's watching from St. Paul, Minnesota, where it's snowing. So perfect recipe for a snowy day. Perfect recipe. Chicken soup is perfect for a snowy day. These are some of the biggest cloves of garlic I've ever <laughs> seen. This is great. I love it. Um, Oh, here's someone who says, I like to cut the ginger root in half the long way first so I can put a flat side down on the cutting board That's before true. making the thin slices. That's true. Yes. Certainly if you have big pieces of ginger, that works better. Mm -hmm. These are this, these are kind of small, tiny pieces. Another Minnesota person also commenting on the snow. Yep. Do you we know if this frost, but not snow? Do you know right. if this is local ginger? It's not local ginger, no. I don't think we'll get that until like the summer from last resort. 
it is kind of cool to think about a a farm growing ginger, which is a tropical plant in snowy Vermont. But yeah, they have they yeah, have we, ginger growing, and they made ginger. a a drink out of it. They made ginger sizzle. It's like ginger beer. It's really good. So if you're local, come try Last Resort's ginger sizzle. Okay, so the ginger we're also gonna. Um, I'm sorry, the garlic. Get this cleaned up. Um, we're also going to mince. So again, if you have a small food processor, this might go a little bit more quickly. Oops. Can you double this recipe? You can easily double this recipe. Great. Um, the only problem I've had sometimes is I add, because the noodles can be hard to gauge in terms of when, how much they expand when you cook them, they expand just a little bit when you cook them. Mm -hmm. So you might end up with too many noodles, <laughs> but I'm not sure that's ever a problem no. with this kind of a soup. So. Um, it's just more of a soupy stir fry at that point. Right. I mean, you can always add more water if you have too many noodles, so. Mm -hmm. Are you going to use the liquid that you're cooking the chicken as your chicken yes. broth? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to add chicken broth and then I'm going to add some of the okay. water from the chicken. Okay, that's the garlic. And then we have shiitake mushrooms. I should have pointed out the recipe calls for um, dried shiitake mushrooms, which can sometimes be easier to find. Um, and if you are using dried shiitake mushrooms, you would want to start soaking those before you start, you know, before you start this, because you want them to be a little soft mm -hmm. so that they're easier to cut. Um, but they also will soften up a little bit when um you put them in the soup would that be a cold water soak like you're doing the noodles or a hot water soak um i would use warm water it just tends to go a little faster mm -hmm. so i'm slicing the the shiitake mushrooms um into thin slices yeah. we're just super lucky that we have a great mushroom grower in the area these are from thousand stone farms and so we wanted to highlight some some local shiitakes rather than the dried ones And start to smell the chicken all of a sudden. Yeah. I smell chicken and ginger because the ginger is yeah. sitting right here in front of my nose. <laughs> and you take the stems off of the shiitakes, right? You I just leave them whole. Oh, okay. um, I mean, if you are used to taking off the stems, then that's fine. But these are really great mushrooms. Great. These are really great mushrooms. Um, I think sometimes with like other grocery store shiitake the stems get kind of woody and tough, but these are super fresh, which is great. Kind of right in that early, early spring season where we have like some overwintered greens, mushrooms, and that's, you know, local produce is a bit lacking for storage crops. So it's gonna be exciting when that first bit of green hits the, hits the shelves from local farms. So I'm gonna, um chop the the carrots into little sticks um, you could also do thin um, coins because you want them to be relatively thin you don't want them to be thick chunky pieces of carrot
anybody have any questions for Maria at this point or for me, anything else we can answer, just let us know in the Q&A box. Says my ghostly voice behind the screen. <laughs> I will say it's nice to be doing these classes and have the sun still shining outside. I mean, I'm not a daylight savings person. I think it's stupid, which I'm kind of glad that we're maybe getting rid of it, but it is nice to be doing these when there's actual light outside still. Usually we cook in the dark. So um, again, you could do, I'm doing little, just little strips not really thin strips, but just not super thin strips, but just um, long strips. Um, but again, you could do you could do coins as long as they're not really thick. If you were in a real hurry, could you grab a bag of like the matchstick carrots? Yeah. In the grocery store. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm I'm a big proponent of if you can do something to save time, then yeah. go ahead and do it. Um, it's like what I said with this recipe. Um, if you wanted to, you could use leftover chicken, leftover cooked chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the carrots. And then we've got cabbage, the big cabbage. Yeah, that was the smallest one too. Yeah, that was the smallest one and it's they still always, like the size of a child <laughs> and it's really dense yeah. too it's pretty heavy um turn the rest into kimchi or something so um could you do this recipe with a regular green cabbage instead of napa or is really oh yeah way to go? yeah you can do it um the what you want to make sure is that you cut the the cabbage really thin mm -hmm. because it's going to go into the um because it's going to go into the soup so it's, it goes in the soup in the last step. <clears throat> so I just um, I just cut it in half and then I um, cut strips. I know I was looking at the Napa cabbages for you and there were others that were like the size of toddlers. <laughs> Oh, good. Here's someone who says, sadly, daylight savings time isn't going away. It's going to be permanent. I want to go to standard time forever. I just want to, I don't care what time, if we can all agree on it. I just want to stick with one. This little spring forward, fall back thing just confuses children and pets. It ruins our sleep schedules. Our poor dog is like, it's dinner time, right? You know? Well, you gotta wait an hour. <laughs> okay, so um, we sliced the cabbage here. That goes in, in the last step. So I'm just gonna put that aside. And I think our chicken should be done. Smells good. Might need to move a couple things here. And I need somebody asks, is this dish ever made spicy? Maybe some slices of jalapeno. Oh yes, and you can also add hot sauce afterwards. Okay. Um, for sure, if that's your flavor. Yeah. <laughs> you're a spicy that's, person. If that's your flavor. If you're a spicy person, yeah, definitely. So the chicken is cooked. I'm going to put the chicken aside and then I'm going to save the uh, save the liquid. Thinking of that, um, what's the name of that vinegar based sauce that we made for the, the grilling class last summer where we soaked like the garlic and ginger and all the hot peppers in yeah. vinegar. You could add that. That would be good. So I'm going to set this chicken aside to cool off a little bit and I'm going to save, save this water. 
You want the chicken in the fridge or the freezer to cool? No, it doesn't. Or? Okay. I'm not. I don't need it that cold. Okay. So the other nice thing about this dish is it's a one pot dish, yeah. <laughs> which is really nice. Um, less dishes that way. The many bowl dish, but that's just peas on floss. <laughs> yeah. So um, got the chicken cooked. I'm going to start with um, putting a little oil in the pot. If you have ch rendered chicken fat, if you can. Is canola oil sort of the cooking oil of choice in the food? I tend to use canola oil just because the flavor is neutral. Mm -hmm. You could use any oil you like. Um, some olive oils, some of the light olive oils are flavor neutral. Um, the darker olive oils definitely taste like olive. Mm -hmm. So, um, and coconut oil can also have a flavor to it. So yeah. I tend to use canola oil just because it, it's flavor neutral. Um, peanut oil works too, but sometimes you have allergies. So you have to yeah. worry about allergies. Um, We're going to cook the onions a little bit until they're kind of translucent. You don't need them to be car caramelized or anything like that. Um, so it seems like this is a recipe that's sort of infinitely customizable depending on right. what sort of veggies you have, if you like spicy right. noodles. It is, again, basically it's a chicken noodle soup. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so um, the chicken, it's it's not quite cool yet, but I'm just going to pull it apart with forks so it's in bite-sized pieces. Um, obviously, if you let it cool completely, this is easier, but fork shredded is fine too. Um, if you're using bone-in chicken, then you would want to let it cool down a little bit so you can pull it off the bone. Um, And again, if you're using leftover chicken, then that's even easier. So um, this would be a great recipe for like meal prepping. So say like you roasted a whole chicken one day and had dinner with that and then use the rest of it for the soup yeah. another day. I like to have um, roasted cooked chicken around. Mm -hmm. So whenever I. Um, you know, I even I've even cooked a whole chicken and taken the meat off and put it in the freezer because it's just easy to have around. Yeah, it's so much um, more economical too to yeah. buy whole chickens. We did a um, a healthy meal planning class on Sunday, had a lot of great ideas and I was just thinking this would be a great way to, to do that. At home, I'd probably let this cool a little bit more, but mm -hmm. in the interest of the class, we'll just do it. We'll just do it with forks this time. Um, when I was a kid growing up, my grandmother um, would make this. This would be our, when we were sick, this would be what we would eat. And she would put a lot of ginger in it. Good for you. I think I read somewhere that in, you know, like traditional chicken soup, garlic, onion, and a lot of people put like thyme or rosemary all have antimicrobial properties. And that's where they think that a lot of the, the health benefits come from chicken soup when you're sick. So I've just shredded the chicken so it's roughly bite size. Just like that, um, if you can see that. Put that aside. 
It smells good in here. I wish we could pass the smell through everybody's computer screens. The smell of cooking onions is one of my favorite smells. Yeah. Can't go wrong when you start with onions. Can't go wrong with that. Marie and I were sort of talking earlier before the class about how you could make this soup vegetarian quite easily as well. Yes. You could you could simply substitute tofu or your your favorite vegetarian protein um, and vegetable broth. It's already gluten free, which is great. So I put the ginger in. And this step is to develop the flavor of the aromatics. So the onions, the ginger, um, and to start to meld those flavors together. So I'm gonna put in the carrots and the shiitake mushrooms next. And I wait to put the garlic in until just before I put the water and the broth in, just because garlic burns really easily and burnt garlic is not a great flavor. Um, oh, this smells so good. It does smell very good in here already. The shiitake mushrooms smell really good. I bet this would be good if you're going vegetarian, just doubling or tripling the mushrooms and just having the mushrooms be sort of your meaty main component. I put the garlic in. And now I'm going to put in chicken broth. And the reason why I save the water that um, I cook the chicken in is sometimes you don't have enough broth. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you think you use too many noodles and you need to add more broth. <laughs> Uh, somebody's asked what kind of pot is being used and how large is it? Um, this. Just a. I've a done it. In, I usually do it in a five quart Dutch oven size. This mm -hmm. looks like it's an eight quart. Yeah, I think um, it's an eight. Which I don't think we have a five quart in the kitchen here, but um, I think this is an eight quart, but I've done it in a five quart and that's fine. Great. Um, um, somebody asks, have you ever made this with tofu? If so, was it firm or extra firm? And did you saute it first? I used firm and I did saute it a little bit with the garlic and ginger mm -hmm. and all that. Um, and if you can, if you have the time and the ability to press the tofu um, mm -hmm. and get even, even more water out of it, um, it's going to expand a little bit when it gets into the soup. So if it's so the firmer it is when it goes in the soup, the less it's likely to fall apart. Great. So now I just have to wait for this to come up to temperature. Um, oh, there's one step I forgot, which is adding the fish sauce. Yeah. Um, which is fine. You can add it now. It doesn't have to be added. I can I tend to add it at the point where I'm sauteing, um, but I'm going to add it here and we're going to add a tablespoon. To start with. If you're now, not a fan, can you substitute or is that sort of make it not traditional anymore? It's not traditional if you don't put the fish sauce in, but if if obviously if you're allergic 
Um, you can't use fish sauce, but um, you can use salt. I mean, mm -hmm. salt is, um, but fish sauce is what, the fish sauce and the shiitake mushrooms and the ginger is kind of what makes it a little bit um, more unique of a flavor mm -hmm. than um, regular chicken noodle soup. So um, it is the authentic part of it. What about like soy sauce to give it a little bit more of that? You can mommy. also use soy yeah. sauce. Okay. Um, that'll change the color, but it, yeah. it'll, I'm going to taste it. To As see. you know, too, the last time you taught, someone asked the same question and they are making like vegetarian, not fish based fish sauces. So that's also an option to look at if you're avoiding fish but want that flavor. So now I'm just going to cover this a little bit so it gets, um, hopefully, it'll start simmering soon. So you want to let this simmer. I'd say for about 10 minutes okay. just to make sure the the flavors develop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, about 10 minutes would okay. be fine. I will keep an eye on the time. While we're waiting, do you want to talk about maybe some other Filipino dishes that you've done for us in case people haven't seen your other recordings? And I can actually put the link to some of those. Yeah, we've done that. quite a few. Um, yeah. We've done um, pancit, which is a stir fry noodle dish, um, wheat, wheat based noodles, or rice noodles. Um, we've done chicken adobo, which is a, um, which is often called the national dish of the Philippines, um, which is a soy sauce and vinegar braised chicken um, served over rice. Delicious. Um, which is wonderful. Um, we've done steamed rice muffins mm -hmm. um, using rice flour um, that are usually, they're, they can be anywhere from, you know, mini muffin size to hand size, but they're usually as a side dish, um, a savory side dish, um, even though they're a little sweet because of the rice flour. Coconut, um, coconut. Milk. Yeah, they're and, still they, and they have coconut in them, so they're a little sweet, but they're not very sweet as far as um, desserts are concerned. Um, we've also done lumpia, um, which is uh, Filipino egg rolls that are stuffed with pork, um, cabbage, um, carrots, mushrooms, and um, flavored again with fish sauce and soy sauce. And I think we have all of those videos I think in the they're library. All up, or if not, we're yeah. working on them. And then you've also done your summer in-person class with us on the, the right. pork belly, the Filipino street food barbecue. Right. We have done the we've done the the street food barbecue um, in the summer. We do that at the grill at the Inner Vale. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a great class. So this is starting to simmer. Um, I'm gonna add the chicken in. Um, as well. We have someone asking, is spicy food common in Filipino cuisine? Spicy food is not so common, but there's a spicy condiment that is common. Um, Carrie mentioned it earlier. Um, it's a vinegar-based sauce, um, vinegar and, and fish sauce, in which peppers, usually the little Thai bird chili peppers, the little red ones, are um, infused so it's one of those it's um it's vinegar soy sauce a little bit of soy sauce sugar um, right it's got a little sweetness. sugar yeah. garlic ginger and the thai chilies um and you um you just let it sit and and get stronger and stronger and stronger <laughs> and that's a very common condiment that's poured over whatever dish, but the dishes themselves usually don't have a lot of um, heat spice in them. Mm -hmm. um, soy sauce and vinegar are common um, cooking flavors um, in the Philippines. There's a beef steak that is uh, marinated in vinegar yeah. um, called bisteca. Um, and um, that's also, again, it's served over rice and with that, um, condiment with that spicy condiment on top of it. 
Yeah, and if people are local to us here in Burlington, there is um, the always full Asian market, right as you head towards South Burlington, has a Filipino section of yeah. shelves where you can get like the coconut vinegar and the banana ketchup and a lot of the Filipino ingredients that are being used. Um, we have someone who commented that yondu is an excellent umami ingredient that works well in place of fish sauce. So oh, okay. I'll share That's that. Good. That's great. I know like Ocean's Halo does a seaweed based one too, if you want that sort of oceany. So work. this is um, after soaking the rice noodles, this is sort of what they, they get softer. Um, I'm going to drain them real quick. Someone says they love the sound of the condiment with the vinegar and chili. Does that have a name and can you share a recipe? Um, it's just called like vinegar sauce. It has a name, but um, it's escaping me right now. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll Google real fast. Um, but yeah, I have a recipe. It's part of the class. Um, we can pull it up from. Yep, yeah, I can pull it up from an old handout if we you're okay pull it with up sharing from it. An old handout. Yeah, let um, me give me a minute to find that. And, and Carrie I'll would be able to sell it, uh, share it. <laughs> I can sell it. <laughs> Carrie would be able to share it with you. Um, yep, just give me a minute to find it, and I will do that. So, I'm also gonna slice some green onions here, just because at the end we do. Um, Put some green onions on top. Um, green onions always make everything better. <laughs> um, Still looking. So I thought our little stove here sometimes takes a little while to heat up, so I thought it would be a little warmer by now, but it's almost there. Ah, I think I found it. So I'm waiting for it to get back up to a simmer, and then I'm going to add the noodles um, and the cabbage. Salsa one? Am I pronouncing that horribly? S A W S A W A N? No, that's not it. I apologize. The name is escaping me right now. It's on the handout that we yeah, saw for that. That's what you have it in oh. the handout as salsa one. Oh. Sasawan. Sasawan. Yeah, I just pronounced it so yeah. wrong that it sounds wrong. <laughs> I'm going to copy and paste that into the chat real fast. So hopefully everybody will be able to see that. Sorry that it lost all the bullet points. So it's all just one paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> one paragraph. Uh, um, so it says copy and paste. Yeah, yandu is a fermented soybean and veggie sauce similar to soy and fish sauces but vegan that's great yeah so there you go you have so option. that's good to know that there is a vegan um substitute for fish sauce um because i know there sometimes people have there are also allergies mm -hmm. um because people there are some people who are allergic to fish so um let me check here okay we've got it a little bit simmering going i put the chicken in Do you mind if I come move the camera so people can see into the pot rather than you trying to tip the pot? Uh, yeah. yeah. I just don't <laughs> I, want you to try to tip it. To tip so here, I'm gonna, everyone's going to have a um, change of viewpoint real quick, and then we'll go right back. So the pot in here. Ooh. Ah, look at that soup. All right, heading back. And I'm going to check the flavoring. Again, you want... I'm just going to put another, I'm going to put a little bit more um, fish sauce in. You definitely um, want the fish sauce flavor to come through, but don't add salt until you are 
satisfied with the flavor with the fish sauce mm -hmm. um, because fish sauce is definitely very salty. Um, Curious to know if any of our um, watchers tonight are familiar with Filipino food or if um, you've ever been to a Filipino restaurant. Um, I've been to a Filipino restaurant in Chicago, so maybe the person we have watching us from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and there is one Filipino restaurant in Vermont, but it's in St. Johnsbury, which is <laughs> on the other side of the state. Um, but um, usually you can only find Filipino restaurants in metropo large mo metropolitan areas. Um, so I'm really glad there's one in the state. That's really nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let us know in the comments if you cook Filipino food or go on to restaurants. OK, I just get spoiled by your cooking, so <laughs> I get all my Filipino food from you. OK, so now that the we've got it a little bit simmering, I'm going to put the drained noodles in. And at this point is when you check to make sure you have enough broth mm -hmm. because um, you just might end up with too many noodles. Oh no. <laughs> so, oh no, and then you just add more broth. And then I'm going to add the cabbage as well. Someone here says they watch a lot of, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Bettina Macalintals, Macalintals TikTok videos. Apologies for how I pronounced that. I'm sure it was wrong. Um, I'm not familiar with that, but I'll look it up. Yeah, and I love here. I love watching um, here, cooking videos. TikTok. Uh, someone says a big fan of lumpia, but made by a Filipino friend, so they haven't made their own. Yeah, lumpia is um, is one of the more lumpia and chicken adobo are to the more popular Filipino dishes mm -hmm. outside of the Philippines. Um, lumpia, like I said, there's there's many different types of lumpia. Um, there, there's one which is the vegetables and pork. There's another one that is just ground pork and shrimp. Um, and there's also one that's made with fresh wrappers. It's kind of like a vegetable crepe. Nice. Um, and uh, depending on the region of the Philippines might depend on which um, which style of lumpia is done. The same with pancit, which um, I've done using um, the, the Asian wheat noodles. Um, but again, depending on the region of the Philippines, the, the type of noodle might change. Um, so I've also used rice noodles. Um, with this recipe, I've always done it with the bean thread. I've almost always done it with the bean thread noodles. I prefer using the bean thread noodles because they tend to hold up better than the rice noodles, um, which is the other type of um, clear noodle that you might use. Um, the rice noodles tend to break up. They don't change in flavor. The flavor's fine, mm -hmm. um, but they tend to break up, um, especially if you end up with leftovers. <laughs> um, but the, the bean thread noodles don't. Some of the bean thread noodle brands you might get um, really long packages of them mm -hmm. um, and they're not cut which <laughs> is um, I think I put in the instructions cut them if necessary because otherwise you end up with noodles Slurp. that are like Slurp. literally six feet long um, which might be fun but um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you get if you can only get those kind that are the long um, the long packages then make sure you just give them a cut um, right down the middle um again this is a very simple and very quick um we're basically done making it um we're just waiting for the it to come back up to a simmer um and then let it simmer for a little while mm -hmm. um but basically um this is all that is involved in making the soup so the most involved is cutting the vegetables um again if you can use cook cooked chicken. If you have cooked chicken lying around, you can just throw that in there. Um, and again, I use chicken thighs and chicken legs usually because I tend, I think that they have more flavor than chicken breasts. Mm -hmm. Chicken breasts can also get really dried out. 
um, but it's up to you how you would want to do that. Um, and the most involved is cu cutting the vegetables, really. Um, so, but they're not they're not exotic, difficult to find ingredients other than the most exotic would be the shiitake mushrooms. <laughs> the noodles um, and fish sauce. Yeah. That's not something you keep in your. The pantry. noodles and fish sauce, but you can get those. That you can get those ingredients. Those three ingredients: shiitake mushrooms, the noodles, and the fish sauce at any Asian grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, here locally, I know you can get that. You can get them at City Market and even Hannaford and. Mm -hmm. Uh, market 32. So um, it's nice to see those ingredients getting out more and more into into more stores um, because I just think that it just adds more flavors um, out there available. Um, so let me check the flavor one more time before I figure out if we need to add any um, any more fish sauce or salt. Would you ever um make the soup with just rice instead of noodles? Would you ever just cook in plain white rice into it? Um, not really. Interestingly, this recipe, um, without the cabbage, mm -hmm. um, is the same as is the same as lugao, um, but lugao is done with rice. OK, it's done with um, uh, glutinous rice. So sticky. Okay. the yeah. really sticky glute, glutinous rice doesn't mean it's got gluten in it. It just means it's really super sticky. Um, and if you do that recipe, it's the same ingredients except for the cabbage, but you cook the rice in a, a lot of water and you cook it for a long time, which is why I've never done it for this class series because you have <laughs> to cook it for about an hour. And then it turns into a porridge. Oh, um, it's like con congee. It's like congee, nice. yeah. Um, and that recipe is called lugao, L-U-G-A-W. Um, uh, so yeah, you could um, do it with rice, um, but, but it, it just turns into a different. congee. <laughs> yeah, it turns into a congee. Um, I've eaten this with with leftover rice mixed into the bowl, um, and that's actually good too. So you have bean thread noodles and rice, but um, it's not normally done. It's not normally served with rice. So here is, I think this is pretty much done. I'll come do another. I don't know why my carrots all sunk to the bottom, but um, I'm trying to stir them up to get some color in here. <laughs> come do another quick camera swoop in. No one's got vertigo. It doesn't look, because the noodles are clear, if you can see. There we go. The noodles are clear. so. The soup doesn't look like much in the pot, um, but the noodles are clear. And the texture, I really like the texture um, because they're really, they're soft and slippery. Um, so that's essentially it. The soup is done. Um, yeah. Show it with the chopsticks. You told me it's sometimes Yeah, I'm going to put this. them in a bowl and, right. and show you. Um, Too bad there's not a good way that we could do the lugao in yeah. class, but you're right, that would just be too long unless we pre-cooked everything beforehand and then it would probably be real quick. So like I mentioned, we are probably going to wrap up closer to 6.30 since obviously our soup is done. So now is a perfect time to put any last minute questions or comments into the chat. I will see all those and I will read them out. I'll leave the chat open for a few more minutes um, just because I know with the delay, maybe you're furiously typing and just haven't seen it yet. So thank you all so much for joining us as we get to enjoy this delicious soup. I wish you all could be here and, and eating it with us, but go ahead and put questions and comments in the chat. So you can eat this with a fork and spoon, but it might be easier to eat it with chopsticks. Um, so we did bring some in. Um, I, I sprinkle green onion on top, fresh green onion, um, and 
the hot sauce condiment that I mentioned earlier, um, but you could use any kind of hot sauce. You use sriracha would be fine. Um, so this is, I don't know, can you see that? Yep, that's great. So this is the dish here and you can see the noodles are clear, um, chicken, the shredded chicken and the mushrooms. So this is a great dish for the winter because it is a noodle soup um, and soups are always great in the winter. Yeah. I know that I'm going to need to wear an apron because I am terrible with chopsticks and I will throw noodles all over the place, but I'm so excited to dig in. Um, everyone's so, just saying thank you in the chat. So thank you very much. Um, I hope that you get a chance to try this recipe or if you were cooking along. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, and if you do make it, send us pictures. We love seeing when people um, make the recipes that we demo in these classes and then send us photos of the finished products. So with that, I will end the event. Thank you all so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings and the rest of your weeks. Good night. Thank you.